Where do we go and when will it be so noticeable? When we reach $2 trillion in, in interest payments, will it reach $5 trillion in interest payments? That will be within the next year. And at what point do we print so much money that everybody understands outside the United States that they can't print like that? It's going to, it's not we're worth anything. There's that rollover point, and when will that be? That's the question. And they were able to trade what was previously a $20 uh, coin, which at the time would have been worth 7 bucks, And they were able to still hold the value and trade what, what's next above 1,000 quatillions for the same coin. People who had the, the pocket change were the ones who survived because they had the silver content, just luckily, by happenstance. And welcome back for the second hour of Mini Ice Age Conversations. David Dubon, your host, right here on Bright on TV, every other Friday, 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. How close are we to hyperinflation? I didn't have enough time to finish this slide just before we hopped on the break, so let's get right into it. This is the money supply, and when it contracts, that's our government taking money out of circulation. And when it contracts, it means there's less business activity. It's a cycle also, you can pull the money out, there's not as much going around, it contracts the business, the economy contracts, and then you get that daisy chain of all the effects. Well, if you look back at the chart, this actually goes back into 1870s where there was one more instance of this, one more time back in the 1870s where they contract the money supply. That was a switch from a dual-based monetary system of gold and silver both into a single monetary base of gold usage only. And that's when that collapse happened and the pull out of the money, because they subtracted all the silver out of the money supply and the money flow in America. And then we went to a gold back system. That's great to go to a gold back system, but it was gold and si silver also. It was a dual metal system. And the last time that we saw that great collapse was when they stopped using silver as money and moved it exclusively into the arena of gold. So another ambulance comes by and all I can say is COVID response for the fourth time in this video, a lot. Happening around the world, can't talk about that here. We'll leave it as such. But you'll see how the money supply continues to dwindle. So we are at the flaming out of the dollar. I do believe. I really believe that. I'm really, I'm sad. Kind of feel just like, ugh, my heart breaks because, you know, the nation we had and the mismanagement we're encountering is the main culprit of this. And to weaponize our money. We just kicked everybody in the stomach and, and threw them over all. They're not coming back. They're not coming back during this iteration here. But you got to ask yourself, was this a great plan from on high to these same moneyed families in that first slide that I started with, with the double-headed eagle and with the lions and the Crusarian cross and the reds and the whites? The colors, the iconography stays the same through the millennia. Is it just control of the farm earth? And it's just another play. We're closing the last chapter, we're turning the last page, and we're going to start again. I look back, back through history, it's been nothing but constant war for 6,000 years and just a removing of assets around, dividing countries further, more control over the world as we, and this flame out of the dollar. I mean, everybody's doing it in unison. It's kind of crazy how the entire planet's moving like a school of fish away from it, unless they were told to. And see, that's the whole thing is it seems like it's scripted more than it's just organic. But anyway, we're going to get the brunt of this. So take a deep breath and prepare. This is our dollar state right now. And this is how the world sees our money. This is the value of it. It's now no better than lighting fires in your fireplace while there's still value left. So let's turn a page in history. Warnings of a recession are growing louder as we near sell in May and go away. Citibank warned of the soft landing dream is over. The U.S. economy is headed for a recession in the middle of 2024. As Morgan Stanley warns, a U.S. dollar regime shift could threaten stocks. Meanwhile, the Fed's most trusted recession indicator is flashing code red. Every recession since 1945 has been preceded by a yield curve inversion. Meanwhile, the M2 money supply is meaningfully contracting for only the fifth time since 1870. All signs appear to point to a sizable downturn for the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ. Gold prices have been hitting all-time highs and the rally is far from over. Call the proud Americas of the Patriot Gold Group today before it's too late. And remember, mention the ADAPT 2030 channel. And Patriot Gold Group has a no-fee-for-life IRA where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold or silver. 
and the No Fee for Life IRA on qualifying rollovers. Reach out to Patriot Gold Group, 888-546-7020. For your free investor guide today, that's 888-546-7020. And now on with the video. As I said, I'm here in Budapest on the pest side. This was in the National Library here. This is such an amazing, like we don't do books like this anymore, but let's turn a page from history and see where this will lead us down hyperinflative path. So I'm gonna take you to the last, well, this goes back to 1946, so good enough. you know. It, and I do have some stuff from obviously from the Weimar Republic in Germany, which this banknote comes from. I even have a physical one here and it is an authentic one. They're not very expensive, uh, but there's so many of them that were printed during the time. There are, a lot around still that are in good condition. Hungary, Pango, 1946. Now, I'd like to take you across the chart here. Now, the percentage rate is 10 to the 16th. That means it's followed by 16 zeros. We're into the trillions at that point. That's unfathomable, truly it is. And then the highest denomination was 100 quintillion, which is 20 zeros behind the money note. 20 zeros behind the one. Okay, so then we come, the price required to double for the... This is the most important thing. How long does it take for the money to lose half of its value? 14.82 hours. And then it's doubled. It's like that penny a day doubled for 30 days and you're a millionaire. Right? It's the same thing. Well, you can only cut it in half so many times before the value has gone literally to zero and beyond. So the daily inflation rate was 200% per day. So everything doubled twice a day. It was 24 hours, 28, close enough. Uh, Suriname and the Gilder did something similar. It doubled uh, every 18 hours. And he come down to Yugoslavia and Dinar, doubled every 1.39 days. So we get into this. Let's talk about Hungarian Pango first. Beautiful. These Actually, they had 10 notes. And they used to trade three to a U.S. dollar. So back in the day before the hyperinflation, this was $3 here, this note. And... It's amazing how okay, I, I was in Zimbabwe also, and I traveled there, and it was ten zim to a dollar. So you had to ten Zimbabwe for one U.S. dollar, and uh, that was back in the early 1990s. Ten zim to a buck. I still have a bunch of really low denomination notes, like ones, threes, fives, tens, way back when they still had paper notes at that low level. So looking at the exchange rate now, again, this follows the same bell curve. So we could expect the American dollar to do something similar if it does, and it, in my opinion, it looks like it's on the right track. I'm just saying if it does. So do your own research, do your own homework. 1927, held, you know, tightly. 1937, okay, we're starting to get into the war there, right? And then 1941, for sure, we're getting in depths of the war, some serious destruction, 1941. We weren't even involved, and they were already having uh, troops running around destroying cities here in the country. But within that three-year period, it went from 5 to 33, and then... It just starts rolling. The same thing. Another month, another month. And so it went from night to what's it, August 1945 at 1300 to October, August, September, October. That's two months later. And it went from 1,300 to 8,200 in two months. And then it jumped again from 8,200 to 108,000 in just another month, two months after that. A month, it was October, November 30th. Yeah. And then by the time it reaches the end of the month, they're looking at 128,000 from 1,300. So it's nearly a 100x increase in four months there. That are uh, August, September, October, November, December. Yeah, four months. A 100x increase, which means that's 100 times decreased buying power. So if your loaf of bread cost you a dollar, it would cost you $100. In four months in the difference. Now, I don't know anybody that can really deal with that type. Even the ultra rich are becoming paupers by that point. At what point do people try to say, all right, I don't have anything of value to trade off for that. And then you look how quickly it goes. And I'm saying it's a little bit slow to start. But once it starts, it's literally game over in months. As to go from 1945 into 1946, and you seem like just a few months into 1946, you're already at almost two million. And then by the May of 1946, you're into the billions. It really goes that fast. But then when it's at that point, this is the billion note here. The one, one billion, I do believe, was the Milag. I have to check on that. I think it's a million. It got so big with the numbers, it's ridiculous. Billions, trillions, hundred millions. Hundred. And then we get into the hundred million trillion, the 100 quant or quintillion note in 1946. 
there's so many zeros they can't even whether they just put a B on it and different you know there's different uh, nomenclature for different notes depending on now this is a millard which is not one of the billions the B was the quintillions so I mean these are collectors notes these are harder to find these are very very large notes the smaller ones are quite easy to find not so much but here's the point I want to get across this was prior a twenty dollar coin now the value of it you know when you're up into the billions it's still twenty. But this became the silver value versus the actual coinage value. So this thing held its value because of the silver content in it. And they were able to trade what was previously a $20 uh, coin, which at the time would have been worth seven bucks. And they were able to still hold the value and trade what, what's next above a thousand quatillions for the same coin. People who had the, the pocket change were the ones who survived because they had the silver content in it, just luckily, by happenstance. But you know that if you had silver in your coins, you're looking for that kind of change, then that's what you need. And the same thing here. Now, this is 1789 coinage from the same uh, area, Austria-Hungarian Empire. But the thing is, they even had collectible coins at that point, too. So this was considered a collectible which very much like today, Lynette Zhang, you got to watch her. She talks about all about holding collectible gold and silver. So when they come and say we're confiscating bullion, you're like, they're not bullion. That's a collectible. Are you kidding me? That's a 1789 coin. So even in the what we consider like 1930s, 1940s, there were coin collectors that were sussing out this type of coinage. And this was non-confiscatable. Nobody touched it. It was of royalty. Only royalty could afford, you know, collectible coins. Like anybody had collectible coins, you had real money, real power back then. So nobody would mess with your silver, even though they tried to confiscate at that time too. So there was, they were watching this same exact 2.0 occur. So if, if they're not gonna confiscate collectible coins during this era, and they're only going for bullion, you still see that rolling back into the earlier coin here, you still have the silver value until they confiscate. And at that point, you should be able to trade something quickly for it. Put it on your mattress, hide it. You'll be able to use it forever. Now Yugoslavia, the dinar, go down at the very bottom there. Uh, the inflation rate on a daily was only 64% per day. It wasn't quite doubling every day, but you know, doubling every 1.39 days. And then we come down here and the largest bank note was, how many zeros is that? 500 billion. I mean, look at all the zeros. It happens so frequently. It's, it's more common than not that it does not happen. It's just America's been so big and powerful so long that we thought it would never happen in our nation. But it's been just the standard, these fiat currencies that aren't backed by gold just run away because there's nothing. Once the faith is lost in that currency that it has the value, it is lost. And we're precariously, dangerously close to the rest of the world saying that to us. And our own citizens not believing either. So Argentina. Now you notice also this is another uh, cycle that occurs. It goes in pulses and then you finally stabilize. And, you know, talking to Lynette Zhang over at ITM Trading as well, she told me the same thing. You're going to get into the hyperinflative event, and when you get into that first reset of the money, you want to cash out. That way, you'll be able to pay off your house, get uh, other assets with that money, keep what you don't need back in the metal value, but cash out as much as you need because it comes in these pulse waves, as you see right here. Uh, year over year inflation, and the first pulse on that, it was uh, 8x increase, and then it settled down, and then it jumped up to a 10 times increase, and then it settled down. But each time, you know, you would have been able to cash out at 10 times the amount of value on that silver and when it came back, be able to get the currency back and then want to devalue it again. You know, just cash out really what you need. Because you see that's a wave, it's pulses. And the ultimate came in where they say no data because nobody wanted to go to work on the government side. Now that's another thing that really uh, starts to, you know, really comes into play here. There's no data because nobody went to work on the government side, no police, no statisticians, no government officers, nothing. And that's why we got this massive bump. It pegged the chart of month-on-month -month inflation percentage change. The data dropout is just like we saw in, in the, what was that, 1500s in England. They didn't have enough people either to keep stats about the animals, the imports, the exports, although they did have good records from the church about the funerary rites on how many candles cases they ordered for the amount of people that perished during that time. Otherwise, there weren't enough people to keep records. Same thing. Brazilian inflation, double pulse. We see that, but that got up 7,000, 70 times higher, and then the second wave was 50 times higher. We start to see, okay, you, you understand there's a pattern behind the madness here. Now, this one's not exactly like that chart, but you can see 
how quickly it took a little bit for it to get get in the hyperinflative phase, did it not? It took from like, you know, right around 2012, it started very noticeable for everybody with eyes to see. It started to go up right where we are today. So if you want to put a mark on this chart here, things are going to happen faster because we're in the, it's going to happen faster this time, but it'll follow the same model. So people were aware it started to get devalued. And then we go from 100 to 1,000 to 100,000 to a million. And then once it get to that point, it just runs away after, you know, 10 months, it went from 100,000 to what? 100 million. And then it goes there. And then and finally, it's worth zero. But you see those phases again, the 14 months, the 10 months, those are pulses. Now, if you could exit out somewhere with some metals during that time, you'd be able to pay off everything and uh, own more property and buy other assets with it. Help your neighbors, help your family. If they're going to get their farms confiscated, use your silver or gold and your wealth to keep their farms and keep those families on to produce food for you and your community. Believe me, that's the way it's always been done. Those are the people who survive and you will have allies for the rest of your life. They will defend you if you keep them on their farm and not have them live on the streets, I promise. This is what the value was at the end there in Venezuela. One, this chicken cost that much. When before one of those pieces of paper would have got you the chicken so you start to see, I mean, if those were stacks of $100 U.S. bills, like, and everybody's wiped out at that point. Zimbabwe here, 2007, 25,000% inflation was a 250 times increase in food. So your bread would have gone from $1 to $250 in a single year. That's yeah, That that rips society apart. Now, Turkey, kind of, you know, we're talking about Turkey today. You can see now this line chart here is by the year. So when you, or no, excuse me, by the month in the year. So when you're coming up here, it's like 36%, 46%, that's per month. And then we finally get up here around 80, above 80% per month. So think about the entire year runaway, how much would that be? What, 15, 20 times your money? So a dollar loaf of bread would be over $15 by the end of the year from 2021 to 22. That's why people are trying to buy gold and silver. Now this is the gold mark. I think this is one of the best charts about it. It really gives you that pullback. It shows you where the humps are. It shows you where the... Uh, the awareness takes place and then you really start to run up on it. So I really am very firm that we are right at that point right now of January of 2019 because we're at about double to triple inflation and just give it another year and it will definitely be up somewhere where it's gonna be so noticeable that people are gonna start complaining to the government. Now, will it be up at 10X what it is today? Not sure, but this I envision this for the United States. We're gonna to go to the $1 million note. We're gonna to have to. Every other country has done it. We're the only ones that haven't gone into a hyperinflative event that have not printed this absurd money. So what would you call it? A million dollar note? And what about a billion dollar U.S. note? Are we going to start to look like this also? Here's the question. It's a trillion dollar U.S. note. Keep that for your collection. It'll be a collector's item one day. you probably save some money like that. You can sell it to the future generations for three bucks or ten dollars each. So get thousands of those, and in the future, there'll be an investment. Buy as many of these high-denomination inflated notes as you can and save them for later because people will buy them as collector's pieces. I kid you not. To try to find the high, you know the super high-denomination notes are way difficult. Like this note right here, it's only 20,000 mark. And this is from 1923, labeled note. It is authentic, and uh, it's from the area Zwangit Alsend, the 20,000 mark. These are available everywhere, and they're not that expensive. But to find one of those billion marks, impossible. Those are hundreds of thousands of dollars, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars if they're in garbage condition. So the uh, and look for Zimbabwe notes now. Any of these really super high Zimbabwe notes are hundreds of dollars for the Zimbabwe. And that's just a little bit of time. So I'm going to put these charts next to each other. I really am going to ask you this question here as we're signing off. Like, has the U.S. entered the era of hyperinflation? Now, most of the world's noticed yes. But the U.S. public, not yet. Where do we go and when will it be so noticeable? When we reach $2 trillion in, in interest payments, will it reach $5 trillion in interest payments? That will be within the next year. And at what point do we print so much money that everybody understands outside the United States that they can't print like that? It's, gonna, it's not we're worth anything. There's that rollover point, and when will that be? That's the question. And that's the reason I was trying to put all this information together along with, you know, while I'm out here traveling. So right now, let me show you some notes. 5,000 note. Exchange rate today is about 375 for a euro or so. But we don't have any 5,000 notes in the United States. We don't have denominations this high. We used to have a 1,000 note. This is kind of a cool one. 
We used to have thousand dollar notes in America until they took them out of circulation because it was too much money. Now, they used to have 500 euro notes, thousand euro notes, but they took those out of circulation too because it's too much money to walk across with on a board. You could smuggle a hundred grand in just your wallet, right? They didn't know oh, that's too much money. So they give you twenties and fifties, especially in the UK, they did away with all those notes. You got fifties and 20. I don't even know if the fifties usable anymore, but it's all just real low denomination now. We've entered the era of hyperinflation, but what point are we on this trend? Because that could help you get ready for this. And with gold and silver running away on the price right now as well, you, once silver goes to 40 or 50, you know it's game on. That would be a big clue for me too when silver reaches 50, that we're not coming back off this chart. And that is the beginning of the launch up to the 10 to 50 times devaluation in the money first before we just get so angry back home that they're going to have to do some intervention to pull the price back. That only works for a sliver of time. They're not gonna reset the money on the first try. It might be somewhere like um, 2023, January when it runs up to a hundred, or excuse me, a thousand or 10,000 times the previous value. At that point, then people, then they're gonna reset the money and knock a bunch of zeros off. That's when you should, uh, at least according to many others, think about diving out. So anyway, I hope you get your game plan together. David Dubai and signing off. See you next time, bye for now.